Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Welcome this morning to uh, Peace Through the Word, Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, a LCMS, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Congregation. And I'm Pastor Ron York of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, welcoming you this morning to our Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace Through the Word. Coming to you from my study here in my residence in Oro Valley, Arizona near Tucson and so good to be able to welcome you this morning worldwide no matter where you're chiming in from and uh, so I'm trusting that wherever you are that you're having a good day whether it's morning or late afternoon as it is over in Spain so uh, but what a blessing it is to be able to be with you this morning brothers and sisters this morning our devotional is going to talk about the reality of Satan and too often we just kind of push him off, don't give him uh, the credit that, uh, or the attention or the uh, reality uh, that is obviously there. Uh, satanic acts have expressed themselves in recent days. We've had a shooting uh, in, over the July 4th uh, weekend, in fact on July 4th in Chicago, Illinois, here in the United States. And I believe very strongly it was satanic uh, uh, formulated. And, and I believe that the perpetrator was possessed by Satan. So we need to, to understand that Satan is very, 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 very real. And he's very attractive. He's not d depicted as this red guy with horns and a pick. No, this fellow is extremely attractive. And he, he has a charisma about him that attracts people to him. You would not be um, abhorred to see Satan face to face. You would be very much attracted to him. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's so much contrary to how uh, America wants to depict him. And we dare not do that. So I pray that our time together this morning will... Uh, present a seriousness about him and, and a very strong uh, uh, doing, doing due diligence to um, run to Jesus Christ for our deliverance because it's only through the person of Jesus Christ that we can have deliverance over Satan. You can't withstand him on your own merits, on your own efforts. You will fail and fail miserably all the time. Okay, so that's what uh, we're going to see this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Holy God, Holy and Most Gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. Taught by our Lord and trusting in His promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We want to also profess the Christian faith, and we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. So together we profess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So the passage of Scripture that our devotional is going to emphasize this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. And we have this recording as to Satan. It says, How you are fallen from heaven, 
O day star, son of dawn, how you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. Satan was a very beautiful angel that God created. Very beautiful. And he, he rebelled against God. And so God, in Jesus Christ, kicked him out of heaven along with his demons. And that's where he is today. Satan rules the earth. This is his domain. But his, his domain is cut short. He knows it. Jesus descended into hell after, uh, after he was crucified. And Satan realized face to face that he was defeated. That Jesus gives victory and has, has uh, uh, shown that he's victorious over Satan. So Satan's days are numbered, and he knows it. That's why he's very busy to get as many people as he can uh, in his uh, realm, hell. And he's going to do everything in his power to do that. And he's very powerful. He's very, and he's very cunning. He, he doesn't just, I mean, you don't go to sleep tonight, wake up tomorrow, and being a follower of Satan. He's sly, you know. So, um, so we need to be very much alert and very much doing due diligence to stay very steadfast in faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't have faith in Jesus, you need to, you, you need to, you need to quit putting it off and get serious right now. Okay? So let's hear what our devotional has to say this morning. It says, He shone so brightly among the heavenly host, he was called Day Star and Son of Dawn. That was Satan. The day star's fall from his high position was described by Isaiah. The son of dawn turned against God and tried to turn creation against its creator. <clears throat> Any way you look at the interpretation, it is clear that evil is present in our world. We don't have to look too far to know that this is true. Evil is with us, and it is impregnated in everything that we see and do. This administration in the United States, uh, our president is evil, the, the Democratic Party is evil, uh, and everything that is going on in the United States is evil, and it's satanic organized. Very much so. Okay? So it is also clear that God has defeated evil. He could look at uh, we could look in the Bible at the past nations that were evil in the sight of the Lord. And we can do that. And we're on the same path, the United States. We're on the same path as Israel, no question. And if we don't repent, uh, there's going to be serious, catastrophic consequences enacted against the United States to the surprise of the world. Okay? So it says, we could look at evil men throughout the ages who sought to control the earth using wars and weapons of mass destruction. In all these cases, we should be aware of the reality of Satan. Look what's going on in the Ukraine. Look at how, what it costs you to, to get your car filled at the gas pumps. Look at the high rate of inflation. Look at how your investments have deteriorated in the last few weeks and few days. Look at the violence that is being perpetuated in our cities. Look at how uh, uh, injustice is being incorporated in just about every aspect of American life. Look at how dangerous America is to live in. And then we go, we just pass it off. It's all the works of Satan. All right? So he waits for the time to take us away from God. He spends every second of each day looking for opportunities to do that. Look at how people push Jesus Christ and Christianity out of the equation. They don't even want to talk about Jesus. They stay away from church. They don't get involved in ministry. They don't study their Bible. And yet these same people are going to tell you unequivocally that they're Christian. That is evil. And people even being confronted with the commandments of God will justify themselves so as to do the evil that they want to do instead of confessing and repenting. 
That's all evil. That's all the works of Satan. That's how he works. Totally disrespect for God, his word, and his sacrament ministry. Totally. And that's what we're seeing taking place proliferately in every aspect of life, whether it's Christian or not, here in the United States. Not a good picture, but that's reality. And, then, and so it calls for being due diligent in word and sacrament ministry, confessing and repenting of sin, and walking in the new life that we have by and through our baptisms. Short of that, it won't happen. And you can vote all you want. You can promote all the rhetoric you want. And that's exactly what King Solomon said, is a chasing after the wind. Most assuredly. So here's another reality, though. Jesus has defeated Satan. Totally. Totally defeated him. When Jesus comes back to take us home on his second coming, it's going to be a lot different than his first coming. There's no more uh, baby in the manger and all this stuff. Jesus is coming as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's coming to judge. It's going to scare the daylights out of most people. But he is also coming uh, to be able to uh, remove Satan from his uh, dominion. Satan will not be able to keep us from our Lord Jesus. Jesus' death and resurrection has saved us. Now that is the great news for today. Jesus has saved you. He loves you unconditionally. And he loves you so much that he doesn't want you to perish. But rather he wants you to be saved. That only happens by and through faith in Jesus Christ. And he gives you that faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't accept him. <laughs> That's never taught in Holy Scripture. But Jesus gives you faith. You receive Jesus. You don't accept him. And you don't do anything. Jesus does everything. So you just need to trust him. Trust his word. Get into the Bible. Start reading your Bible today. Start going to church today. Start being willing to get into ministry today. Quit putting it off. Quit manufacturing excuses. You know, people say, well, I don't go to church because it's all full of a bunch of hypocrites. You know what I say? Yeah, that's true. And there's always room for one more, so why don't you join us? You know, everyone is a hypocrite. There's not one person that's, that's exempt. We're all hypocritical. So that, that, that excuse doesn't, you know, measure up either. So it's time, people, to get serious with Jesus, His church, and His Word and Sacrament ministry. It's past time, quite frankly. No more fooling around, okay? Which is what's been going on. And people don't like to hear that, but you know what? You're going to hear it anyway from me, okay? I'm not necessarily interested in what people want to hear. I'm interested in what they need to hear, and that's a big difference, Okay? So I pray that's going to bless you. All right? So allow me to please pray. So Lord God, we thank you for saving us from sin, from death, and from Satan. And for redeeming us through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. In his name we pray. Amen. Thanks be to God, brothers and sisters. And this is the word of God. It's not the word of Ron York either. So... That's that much more to praise God for. Amen. So we, we cry to you, O Lord, in the morning our prayers come before you. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Every day we will bless you and we will praise your name forever and ever. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems your life from the pit, Jesus. He reaches down, he buys you back. The word redeem is an accounting term. It's also a legal term. It means to buy you back. If I'm going to redeem your car, I'm going to buy your car back. 
If I'm going to redeem a contract, I'm going to buy that contract back. But in legality, any time that takes place, there has to be what's known as consideration that takes place. Consideration in the legal field usually is in the form of money. So money gets paid and then the contract is bought back. The consideration that Jesus used was his own precious blood on the cross. So that's how he redeemed and bought us back. Okay? So he redeems our life from the pit, and then he crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. We don't get what we deserve. <laughs> you know? So hear our prayer, O Lord, let our cries come to you. So let us pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings and life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, as well as Satan, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, again, let me thank you so very much. Lynn Lawrence, let me thank you, my dear, for chiming in from Benson, Arizona, Cochise County. Brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful day here in southern Arizona. I was just outside a few minutes ago talking to my neighbor. It's, it's going to be 105 uh, degrees here in the Sonoran Desert today. Uh, a lot of people are, are hot. I love it. You know, I love the Sonoran Desert and I love the heat. All right. But you got to be very careful, especially out here. We have a dry heat. A lot of people laugh about it, but it is dry. Uh, and so what does that mean? That means you can be dehydrated and not even know it. Seriously. And that's dangerous. So my words to you this morning, <laughs> stay hydrated. Drink your water and, and be careful out there. You know, I love the heat. I love the desert. I love the sun. I love the mountains. I love everything here. There's not one desert plant here or desert animal that I don't love and, and like. But you got to be careful. Carol Rollins, my secretary, my dear, good to see you this morning. God's blessings to all of you in abundance. And uh, so, but please be careful out there. Enjoy your day. I really want you guys to go out and enjoy the day. But please be careful with the heat. All right, please. Uh, you can get sunstroke. And believe me, I'm, I'm the worst person to be able to tell you this because, but I'm telling you because I've, <laughs> you know, I haven't done it and then I've, Paid a price, so I don't want you to pay the same price, <laughs> you know. Learn from me being stupid, okay? And you'll be good. <laughs> okay. All right, but I love you guys so very, very much, and uh, I just want you to enjoy life, <clears throat> which is why I do this ministry, because, you know, you may think that I'm coming off like a, you know, banji in a china shop or something, but, man, I don't want to anybody to either hear Jesus say, depart from me, I never knew you. I never want to hear that to be said, nor do I not want you to be in heaven, you know, with me and Jesus, <laughs> or Jesus and I. So that's why I'm so passionate. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, brothers and sisters, again, beautiful day, clear skies, uh, wonderful day for flying. So the flaps have been retracted, so has the landing gear. And so I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies. <laughs>